Yo, what up everyone? It's your boy, Savagewood, the Benny Hill Zerg, back with another map tutorial. This one will be from the Zerg's point of view. So this map is called, like, Lily Rat Crest, or something. I don't really know how to pronounce it, but... I mean, you know this map. It has, like, a disgustingly open natural, and, like, a weird third with rocks. So I'm gonna talk about how to win from Terran's point of view, too. Here it is. You veto this fucking map. Thus concludes the Terran tutorial. Now, I'm serious, like, if you're Terran, like, like the video, say thanks, I won't lose any shitty games on this awful map, and then fucking peace out. But if you're a Zerg and you want to beat Terran, I'm going to show you how. So, we're going to start off with a Droopy 14 Scout. I like scouting first, pure luck, but basically we're going to need our Overlord to get here, and since it's a four-player map, we can't afford to have the Overlord all fucked up. So I get first scout, and I immediately resend my Overlord to right here. This is very important. Also, note that you're going to be sending your second Overlord here as well. And I saw a bear, or I saw a supply depot. Two racks doesn't really work in Legacy of the Void, so I'm not worried about that at all. But. I hatch first on 14, make a pool, make a gas on 14, and then make my pool on 14, and then my overlord. I find that this is a pretty safe standard opening in Legacy of the Void. I also find it is pretty good for economy. If you're above, I'd say platinum level. After you get 100 gas, you could take off and like get your two queens faster. But to be honest, like I don't even mess with that. And I'm high diamond with Terran and Zerg, so I wouldn't recommend it, honestly, if you're a low-level player. But regardless, so Yo-Yo here is going to go CC first and then go into two barracks. Most Terran players will go CC first into one barracks and two reactor Hellions into a third, like an, immediately th an immediate third. If they do this, this build will win 100% of the time. You will win 100% of the time. It's a straight up hard counter. It's like when people did this weird command center wallin and cats started making hatches in their natural and like fucking spreading creep the opposite way. It will just straight up win you the game every time. But if your opponent does not do that opening, then I think you will still have an advantage most of the time. So Yo Yo is gonna do his shit. Oh and by the way, like I'm doing the standard like getting gas with a hundred, I'm gonna take a layer with my next hundred gas, I'm doing double queen, I'm doing one geyser, and I'm making pure drones. Like it's just simple Zerg shit that anyone who's played Zerg for a long time is completely used to. But I'll point it out for the newbie. So he's gonna Yo Yo's gonna float his base down here and look at the absurd amount of open space. This means that he either A is going to be vulnerable to a frontal attack or B is going to have to build a lot of stuff out here, like so much stuff that it's not really feasible and it's just going to be a hindrance to him. So this is pretty vulnerable, but this is why you veto the map as Terran, because this is so wide open. So oddly he's going to opt for like two barracks, which is extra safe. If he went straight into factory into third CC, fucking beautiful, it's a free win. But he's going to even get a third barracks, so he's playing really safe. This is because of the map. Notice I'm spreading creep here. I know he spawned bottom left, so I'm intentionally going to focus my creep spread to getting it to right here and right here. If you're above platinum, then remember to spread creep out here too. If you're not, if you're a lower level player, then just focus on getting the creep to his front door. Get, like I said, get your layer with your next 100 gas, and then I'm going to take these other gases and go into two hatch muta. But here's where kind of the, the crux of the build comes in. Although I will remind you that everything I just said is relevant to getting to this point. Hence why this tutorial will be like 10 minutes and not two. So the point is, is I'm going to morph these and then drop links into his base. If he does, then if he doesn't make these barracks, it's a free win. He can't defend it with just Talions. <sighs> Excuse me. However, these dropper lords should have been made earlier and closer to the wall, or closer to his base, his main, this ledge. But 
Being as I play mostly Zerg, I'm not used to this micro, especially with really slow overlords. So this is about 30 seconds later than it should be, which, to be honest, is uh, a big deal. So the trick to doing this micro is having your overlord like stop and then just loading it from the low ground and unloading it. And remember, we want to keep creep spreading. Unless you're like diamond or higher, you're probably not going to be able to micro this shit and do it. This is bad. I like fucked up my micro here. You want to have and like C. I like really didn't play this perfectly. I intentionally pick games to make tutorial videos over where I don't play perfectly because I know when you try this stuff you're going to mess up and it's not going to be a 100% win every time. So, I kind of it's almost like I'm preparing you because I know you're not going to be perfect. Great excuse for shitty gameplay, huh guys? Anyway, the whole point of TVZ, if you really think about it, is momentum control. And right now, this Terran player, Yo-Yo, he did a uh, like a fast expand, but then he made six Hellions. And as soon as the Medivac came out, he wanted to do a combat shield marine push with the Medivac and these Hellions. So I've already delayed this by a minute. And you ask, why is that important? Because it's allowed me to finish my Spire. It's allowed me to start my Mutas in a few seconds when I realize what macro is. And it's allowed me to take my third. Think about if he had gotten to push a minute and a half earlier and hadn't had to dick around with me and my lings. My creep spread would have been abated. He would have killed these two queens. Everything would have been late. So right now, I have the advantage. He's, he's opted for this little push strategy, and I've thrown him off his game, so he has not made his third command center. Terran players play with a significant amount of force of habit. I'm not like, shitting on Terran players. The, speaking of shit, watch this Muta micro. Absolutely fucking god awful. Like I was saying before, Terran players are creatures of habit. They're used to doing the same thing every game. They've like been using the same. They're like Terran players will literally use the same build. They'll like figure out a build they like and use the same shit for four years. Like the reactor Hellions into a quick third base. That was like right as Hots came out when innovation was big. Like, they do the same shit, so if you throw them off their game with, like, weird stuff like that, they're completely out of their element for the rest of the game. And I, I, I idiotically lost my two creep queens. Don't do that, guys. I always do that. It's a really bad habit. Like, as a player, you should try to break it. However, my creep spread was so thick and filthy that I was able to continue to spread it. And right here, look at this. He's trying to get a third. He invested so much in that push, and he's behind because of the drops. And this map is so bad for Terran that I can just dart in here and consistently pick off buildings. I can pick off working SCVs. Because, remember guys, he opted for that combat shield stem push, so he has two tech labs. So he can only build four marines at a time. And he really needs to try to pump out medevacs, but he also needs liberators. So right now, this is, obviously this guy isn't the best player in the world, but, I mean, this is a tutorial video, so I imagine a lot of people from lower levels are going to use this. So, th I mean, this concept applies all the way up to, like, Masters League. If you fuck with a person, like, if you consistently harass them, you're going to force them to make mistakes. In this game, it looks like this yo-yo guy has absolutely no fucking idea how to play. Honestly, the fact of the matter is, he's a fucking Terran player, and he's a creature of habit. And he's used to doing things in a certain order, and like he's used to get like that push doing damage. He takes his third, he macros up, and then he crushes me with his advantage. However, he's not used to people dropping lings in his base that early on. He's almost never been in that situation, we, one can assume. So look at this, this is very important. I continue to harass with the mutas and do not let him move out. Notice the creep spread is already at his front door. I'm going double upgrades behind this, and I'm getting a late-ass baneling speed. Obviously, do not delay the baneling speed. That was an accident. I'm taking my fourth. My third is droned. And I made lots of banelings to try to end the game. Every Zerg player has dealt with this before. You make banelings, realize you don't have speed, and you just say, fuck it. And that's what I did. That's kind of the one of the positive things about the strategy that I'm showing you guys is like you can kind of play like a retard and take inefficient trades as long as you remember to expand and drone behind this as long as you stay in the fucking Terran player's face and spread your creep effectively he can't do anything look in his main it's already almost mined out he's disgustingly oversaturated it is natural 
and he has a third base that he can't fucking land anywhere. And any time he wants to move out to attack me, he can't because I have mutas and lings in his face, and it's basically like I have fucking map pack because of all this creep. These overlords should be spread a bit better, but the only way he's going to be able to drop me is to go all the way around, which is obviously very ineffective, and there's a chance that I can cunt the drop down anyway. Now as we can see, I'm getting double upgrades for my ground army, and I'm upgrading my mutalisks. Look at all the way he has to traverse just to try to defend this third, and then I just run away. But here I come in because he can't. the only way he can get out is meta backloading, so he does that. But I know he doesn't have the money for like a Thor or anything. So then I just run in here, pick off a few medibacks. I do not overextend. And whenever you hear things like, oh yeah, that was awful, holy shit. But like I said, guys, he's on the back foot so he can make inefficient trades. Look, he has to walk all the way down from his main base, all the way down his ramp, just to try to push this fucking creep spread back. I'm laying new tumors in my main base. I'm looking good still. This fourth needs to have drones transferred to it. Which, remember in Legacy of the Void, you mine out faster, so you need to be more diligent about transferring drones from your natural and main, which I do. Here, look, he has so little money, he, he can't afford medevacs. Not only can he not afford medevacs, he also needs liberators to deal with these mutas. In my opinion, Widow Mines aren't that great uh, like when you're behind I don't think widow mines are very good for doing like an aggressive push especially when I'm going so heavy on mutas but regardless he doesn't even have money for medevac so whether or not he could afford liberators as well is kind of irrelevant so look he's fu he's trying to take his third our creep spread that we committed to with the double queen is doing wonders for us this is another key element of zerg versus Terran that new players might not be familiar with is you need to harass constantly with your mutas. Everybody knows that, right? However, if you don't off-race Terran, you don't really realize that like you kind of expect to be harassed here, especially after you after your Zerg opponent does it quite a bit. So after you harass in one spot and they allocate all their troops to that one location to try to defend it, you fucking come and hit them in a completely different location. It seems simple, but even pro gamer Zergs will consistently attack the same spots. In here, Guess what? I'm forcing him to make mistakes. He's trying to clear this insane creep spread. And I'm being annoying with mutas. Basically, at this point, I bled him so dry, he doesn't have enough fucking units to do anything. He doesn't have enough units to attack me. He doesn't have enough units to clear the creep. He doesn't have enough units to kill my army straight up. He doesn't have enough units to take his third. This is all because in the early game, we threw him off, and he's been on the back foot ever since. That's why that double little that's why that ling drop is so lethal, guys. So at this point, I kind of know I've won, so my macro's starting to slip. Another great excuse. I'm just full of those great excuses. Back to the uh education. Take your fifth. Really the only way I can imagine you guys losing, well A taking mine hits like that, holy shit. And B, if you just like sit on three bases and overcommit and take bad trades. Because all the stuff I said about not being able to take good trades uh, only applies if you continue to macro well. So like this guy, you're like, wow, this guy's fucking horrible. Look at all of his red units. Well, it's not that he's really that bad. I've just fucking kept him on two bases for 13 minutes. And he's going to GG out. So a quick overview, just a little recap. You want to go drone scout immediately to get your overlords in the right spot. Abuse this ledge with ling drops. If he goes a fast third CC, you should win every time or cause game ending damage. If he opens more safe, and remember he probably will because this map is so bad for Terran, then you do significant damage. Then you go into two hatch muta, take a third behind it, get your double up spanling nest eventually into hive. And then you're consistently aggressive. You never let him get back in the game. You consistently harass. And you try to do multiple locations. And you try to spread creep to his front door. So I know that was a lot to take in. And that might have not been as build specific as some people liked. But I thought it was a nifty little trick. And if you're Terran, do yourself a favor and veto this map. And if you like the video, leave me a like and a subscription and all that jazz. It doesn't cost you anything. And you won't get any 
annoying notifications. Peace out, guys.